I've always been extra curious about the very expensive Sony camera phones that are usually marketed not to the general public, but to professional photographers that want to have an easily carryable extra option in their pocket. Now, that doesn't mean that the general public isn't interested in these phones. Sony has many supporters and fans from all over the world, and that is why today we decided to take a look at the upgraded Xperia 1 Mark III and compare it with the big boss, the Xperia Pro I. The results were super close with some unexpected twists, so stay with us while we let the facts speak. For starters, I think it's a significant detail that the photos taken in portrait mode as well as all photos taken with the front camera can only be taken while the camera is in basic mode. There's a lot of modes and apps for these two very advanced phones, so I'll try to inform you about them to the best of my ability while going through the categories. Basic basically means that there's little to no adjustment made by the software. Speaking of adjustments, it's kind of hard to tell which photo belongs to which phone to be honest, because they're very similar when it comes down to portrait pictures, mainly because we're not able to take them in auto mode. If you're interested in these phones, it's important to know that they're not really optimized for anything except photos and videos with the main rear camera, so don't expect nice selfies and other things that rely on software processing. There are minor differences in some pictures that do make me prefer one over the other, but the differences are not consistent, so we'll start this comparison off on an equal footing. Let's slow things down a little. I mean, these phones are kind of supposed to replicate professional cameras and give you the opportunity to shoot some footage and then watch it on these awesome 4K screens, right? Well, both phones can do 4K at 120fps, and I'm quite content with the quality. Normally, I'd prefer at least 240 or even maybe 480fps to really get those shocking details, but obviously this isn't that feasible when you're shooting with 4K, so I understand why Sony hasn't tried to implement this. Overall, they're both good enough for shooting things like sports and maybe some basic stunts, and I want to say that I really like watching videos on these gorgeous screens, so even though it's irrelevant to the slow motion, I'd like to give Sony a thumbs up for going that extra mile. At the same time, you can also give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you're enjoying this amazing comparison video. There's no need to mention that these two are some of the best that Sony has to offer, which does make it kind of self-explanatory that they're obviously going to be using similar technology. Nothing to be surprised here, as both devices are pretty receptive to the can of energy drink, and they're both reacting as they should be. There is no winner for this section, as both phones get a passing grade. Now, here's where we start to see some interesting differences. When we did some other comparisons with the One Mark III, its photos seem so much more natural and alive because the majority of mainstream phones process the photos to make them usable, since these phone cameras aren't good enough to push out perfection without, for example, some sharpness or artificial brightness. But when you put it up against the Pro-I, that's where things start to heat up. The images are darker, softer, and are very, very close to how the view looked from my very own eyes. When the sunlight is there, I'm picking the Pro Eye almost every single time. But when it isn't, since the shadows are left like how they originally are, the Pro Eye can give us a slightly darker photo which isn't always optimal, especially in circumstances when you're wearing dark jeans, black pants, or similar clothes. Shadows and the lack of software intervention prevent the viewer from seeing what exactly you're wearing, and it can also produce suffocating photos if it's just too dark in general. But when the photos are edited, I've got to be honest that the Pro Eye is pretty much unbeatable by any mainstream phone, so I feel comfortable giving it the point for the photo section. The following part was pretty disappointing to be honest, since the phones don't have a dedicated macro lens, nor have a properly designed macro mode to take some interesting and exciting close-ups. You can clearly see the macro sign coming up on the screen, and there's even a picture of a rose right next to it, so the software actually does know what you want to do. However, all that helps is a kind of placebo because it doesn't do much other than sense that you're close to an object. The cameras can't focus on it if you get too close, which kind of defeats the purpose of macro mode. Not much to discuss here, as macro is pretty disappointing for both these devices. For zoom, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. The optical zoom on these phones are pretty baller, and from the research that we've done, we found that the best way to check them out is to focus on their telephoto lenses. The One Mark III has a 2.1 as well as a 4.4x optical zoom, whereas the Pro Eye has a 2.9x optical zoom. Max zoom was really underwhelming, so we decided to not include it in this comparison. It's helpful to keep in mind that these photos were made for standard pictures taken with the wide camera, and also to some degree videography in good lighting conditions. While the zoom is adequate on both devices, I don't think it's anything special as you can already see in the video, and can't really be compared to other phones based on zoom, even though the One Mark III has a periscope telephoto lens rather than just a telephoto one on the Pro-I. 
I don't find the quality of their digital zooms adequate, and one can't be said to be better than the other, so this one will also be a draw. Stabilization is a fun feature that we like playing around with, because some phones have it built into their software, and some, like the Google Pixel 6 Pro, have one or more modes that you can activate, which really enhances the user experience when it comes down to video. These two Sony phones are of the former, and to be honest, it's actually a surprise for me. There's visible vibration in both phones while walking, and even more while running. Not to hate on it too much, as it's not the worst, but you definitely do expect more from high-end devices such as these, even if their main function is to take professional-grade photos rather than action videos, or even videos without the use of a tripod, so I'm hoping to see some bigger differences in the video section. Well, I guess we can say that we do see some differences, which is a huge relief to be honest. The natural colors and softness of the Pro Eye is still prevalent in the videos. When directly compared to the One Mark III, mainly the shadows are darker, which is more optimal at first sight and I kind of prefer these types of videos. However, they're quite similar overall, and considering that you're most likely going to be editing your videos that you take with the devices, there will be an even lesser difference after you do. We played around a little with these videos on our video editing software and found out that if we adjust the brightness and contrast, amongst other things in post-processing, the videos become nearly the same. The Lumetri scope, which helps you evaluate and color correct your clips, shows us what exactly we need to do to be able to edit these videos accurately. Another detail about this section is that both devices are being used at 1x with the standard camera, but the Pro Eye has a wider lens, which kind of makes one look like it's on a different setting, so just letting you know that this is not the case. The slight improvements in the Pro Eye with their unedited footage will grant them the win in this category, although it is a very narrow one. What's up my guys, and we're back with another video, and this time, well, you already know what this is about, it's the audio test between the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III and the Sony Xperia Pro Eye. We're not paying too much attention to noise cancelling and all the other details these days, but we're focusing on the audio quality. So which one do you think has the better audio? In the comments, definitely let us know. If I didn't know better, I would say that the audio quality is completely alike. And it very well may be. They're both pretty clear with adequate noise cancellation, and I appreciate the quality put into these mics because for a camera phone, the audio is indeed very important. I wish there was more I could tell you about this, but both being Sony phones helped them be very similar, so yeah, not much to look into here. Lastly, we have some night footage before we pack it up. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the only way to use the front camera is with the basic mode. Unfortunately, the front cameras for these phones aren't all that great, and I have no idea why Sony didn't just use a better one when they're asking for this high a price for these phones. They're both equipped with the 8 megapixel Samsung Isocell S5K487, and I've seen some review websites classify them as ancient. If you're out with your friends at night and you want to take a selfie, I'd highly advise against it as both are very inconsistent when it comes down to detail, leading me to want to avoid the front camera altogether. Not being able to use the auto mode also hurts the performance of the front cameras as well in this regard. When it comes down to the back camera though, there's a huge increase in quality. There are instances where the Pro Eye does shine with its very natural colors and that signature softness, but overall, they're almost identical. I can't decide on a consistent result between these two phones and their main cameras at night, so I'm not confident enough to grant the win to either side. And before I forget, I wish that Sony had implemented a way to enable the photo button on the screen, as they only let you use the side camera button in the Pro mode. Sometimes you just need that extra flexibility, and it would have been a nice feature to have in your pocket. Well then, the deciding moment. I did think that the One Mark III would struggle because the Pro Eye is said to be the camera phone of all camera phones, and you know how Sony feels about them. I felt a phone with this record-breaking price would come out on top on everything. However, the One Mark III did put up a fight, and this just shows you how much attention Sony gives to the production of these devices if they're gonna be one of a kind. The Xperia Pro Eye wins this contest with 6 points out of 10, and shows slight improvements in quality and color accuracy when it comes to shooting video and taking pictures. The question is though, with the One Mark III being $1300, while the Pro Eye is $1800, is the $500 price difference worth it? If you're just taking photos and videos, I've gotta say that I don't think it is. However, the Pro Eye has a ton of other uses than just being a camera phone, and if you need the utility to pair it up with a professional camera, then it may very well be worth it. That decision will be left up to you and your own research. Hit that like button and sub to the channel guys, and we'll be back soon with a lot more content. Take care, and see you in the next one.